this time on Custom Works, we're looking at the legend that is Cosmotron. Going to be taking you through the whole build. And yeah, this build happened a long, long time ago. But I got the photographs. I got the evidence. So we're going to be running through that, um, how I formed the body, the base car, all of that. Yes, this episode is a bit different. Yes, it's just going to be essentially me talking at the computer in the office. But anyway, attempt to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Oh, yes. Okay then, so Cosmotron, this is how it went from being an idea in my head to being a BMW Z3 to being the UK's first ever bubble top Ed Roth style custom. So first up, we've got the initial um, sketch and I knew, I knew a bit about the Z3 and I knew it had this sort of drilled sill down here because I'd looked at loads and loads and loads of pictures of it online. Um, my best advice would be, if you're planning to uh, build a car over a car, you want to be Googling for images of cars that have been in accidents, that have been stripped down, probably with the body off if you can get it, anything like that, so you can see what sort of structure and what you're going to be working around. And I did all of this on the run-up to building Cosmotron. So, admittedly not the exact car, this is pretty much what the car looked like. Um, I went and bought it, it was £2,000 and I drove it home and seriously at that time, probably the nicest car I had ever driven, certainly the fastest and definitely the quickest off the mark. It really was, um, it was a lovely car and to this day, obviously I don't own it anymore, but sort of nearly 12 years on, still with a full service history. You know, when I got it, it was full BMW dealer service history, but even Cosmotron today, one of the probably only radical customs you'll ever buy that's got a full stamp service history. I built this workshop as well. Um, I built the whole building. Um, it wasn't at this house, it was another house. I had to raise the floor up 1.2 meters from the ground, laid the concrete floor, built all the walls, did everything. I bought this car and stripped it down. And I remember stripping this car down and thinking, I'm absolutely flat broke now. The doors off, took all the rear panel work off it. And all of this stuff is a more structural sort of part of the car. Of course, it's a convertible. So under UK law, I can remove the roof because it's not a structural element. So a little bit further on here. Um, I had, I'd started adding bits back to it, all the parts off it, I sold them all to sort of recoup some money, to buy some steel and stuff, to make this ring, I bought a steel and I still braced in the doors even though it's a convertible, better to be safe than sorry, but yeah at this point I had sold a few bits, got rid of the bonnet, the bonnet on the Z3 is worth an absolute fortune, front bumpers, doors, all of that, and it ended up bringing this base chassis here, so you got that 2.8 Beamer engine, manual box, independent suspension all around, you know, just a real great package and a, a great base for this. Once I'd sold all the bits, that cost me about £300, which is just unbelievable that I got all of that for such a small amount of money. Okay, so here we can see the uh, the rear of the car, and I'd uh, I'd remove the I'd remove the boot here, and then welded in this channel and plated everything up. So we've got that wheel sticking out at the back, sort of hot rod look. Underneath, you can see the IFS of the Z3, and this it was like the gift that kept giving. You know, first off, it was a great base. Then I got all the money back, and then I didn't know how to lift this ring you know, to open and close the dome. So what I use, I use the hinges off the boot on this, which are the same as the boot hinges on a BMW E36. I use three pairs, they've got the gas rams in, and then I use this hydraulic pump, 
that was actually for doing the power soft top on the Z3. I used that and the RAM and that lifted the ring and uh, the gas rams in the hinges sort of tipped the balance, they held the weight and then that actuated it up and down. And still today, over 10 years later, still working great. This was a great day. I finally had the hoop in place. Now, the way I made the base hoop was I pulled two lengths of steel, got them cut on the guillotine. I pulled them round to make the hoop shape I wanted. Then I made this steel hoop to fit inside that hoop because I knew this would have to always be a drain channel for the rain. So rain comes off, down the drain channel, out, out of pipe at the back, and off it goes. Now, here everything looks great. I got the hoop, and I got this hoop, and it's all good. This is where a lot of work was made. If I ever did this again, this needed to be drawn in AutoCAD and laser cut. At the time, I didn't use AutoCAD. I didn't know anyone with a laser cutter. And also with this, because what you end up making is base hoop for this, hoop edges, then you make this hoop, and then this hoop's got a trim hoop that covers the fixings to the dome, and you've got to make them all one off because this isn't like a mathematically perfect oval. If it had been drawn in AutoCAD and laser cut, I could have just took one off the drawing every time, but as it was, I had to hand make every subsequent dome that I had to add to this. So it became a little bit of a nightmare and oh my God, so many hours went into making that dome open, close and have a panel gap. And as a world first in cars with bubble domes, this is the only one that has got a drainage channel and you, you could drive in the wet, which I did drive it in the wet, terrifying. Okay then, so who's this young man? Well, it's me, about 12 years ago. Oh dear, how cruel time has been to my once youthful face. Anyway, here you can see the holes that are in that um, sketch picture. Never end up in the, um, in the finished car um, because they just sit too high up. And of course, I body drop the car over that part. But yeah, I've got the dome going up and down. I sort of fit in it. You know, the car stripped back. And at this point, as I always like to get all the metal work and boring stuff out of the way at the beginning of the job, I think that looks like a man ready to break out some polystyrene. And here we have it, loads of polystyrene and builder's foam. Now, I'd already built Dualatron at this point and problems with Dualatron were, I built Dualatron outside so a lot of that body's made of aluminium and fiberglass. On this car, I'd realized that or the aluminium caused so many problems because it, it sort of expands and contracts different to um, steel and fiberglass, really moves around aluminium does, and that caused cracking in the body. So on this one, I went for my now. Nowadays, it seems almost like a sort of run of the mill thing, something I do all the time. But when I was doing this, believe me, I had nothing but my own mind to reassure me that sticking all this polystyrene and builder's foam on could be shaped into a car and you know and look good. What I had done here is I've used a stainless steel rod and I pulled stainless steel rod around here just to form the sharp edges, just to get a bit of crispness to it so it looked a bit better. And I used stainless steel rod even though it was, and at the time it was so much dearer than mild steel. I made the bonnet in fiberglass on Dualatron and uh, I used a piece of mild steel rod under the filler on that and it, it cracked and came out. So I didn't want that, so I did use stainless steel here. I always say if you can keep steel away from filler and fiberglass, things work a lot better. Oh yes, we're getting some proper shape here. And, already, and still you can see here, I was, I was desperately holding on to the fact that I was going to keep these dimple dyed cutouts. Uh, Obviously, um, I, ne I, I didn't in the end, but I did like that part of the car. So here I was drawing a lot of inspiration from uh, Ed Roth's Mysterian. Um, I love Mysterian a lot, and I took... I'm not going to lie, I took some inspiration there from it. Wow. This is doing the other side, and, you know, if, if you're ever going to shape a body like this, there is a point where it does look like this. 
like an absolute nightmare. I remember just hacking away and hacking away, just hoping that a car would emerge at some point. And um, luckily it did. But yeah, this is some real, real crazy days. And also looking on here, it's my first ever sawzall. <sighs> Happy times. So more body shape in here. This one's gonna have these like three vents on it. Um, that never happened, that was a stupid idea. Definitely coming, I see this stainless steel bar forming this lovely line just here. Um, you know, I've got a nice sort of wheel arch shape. Things are, things are going good. So here, um, here it's all coming together nicely. Incredibly optimistic arc for the dome, like no one's gonna fit under that dome. Even the dome that it got, I only just fitted under it. And in the background there, this picture of Beatnik Bandit on my wall then to inspire me on my wall in the new workshop to this day. Is that the boot of a BMW Z3 standing in the corner there? I think it possibly is. Wow, so, quite a day here, um, more shaping gone on, and now we have actual wheels. And uh, I bought these from North Hans. Um, I got the tyres and the, you know, sort of chrome reverse steelies with the baby moons. And I remember being in there and them saying, what car is this going on? And of course, they come in like a Jag Chevy or Unilug sort of um, stud pattern. And I said, I'm bolting them onto a Z3. And uh, not for the first time, the bloke in North Ant's tyre said, oh, yeah, yeah, the Back to the Future look. And I said, well, and they do in, in Back to the Future. They do, they put the DeLorean on white walls and this would have looked a lot like that. But who just puts a Z3 on white walls? I had no idea what the bloke must have thought I was doing. Right, moving on to the rear. Um, so the rear, you can see the two sort of wings coming in. Quite a good view here of how the ring and all the bodywork around it sort of work together. Because it was on the parallel motion hinge mechanism that I'd used from the BMW Z3 boot, this dropped down and went up and pivoted around here. And that hid all the hinges because, you know, on some of these things, they'll just have two like stainless steel hatch hinges at the back and up goes the dome. But I wanted it to feel... I always feel strange saying this, but I wanted it to feel more like a production car. Okay, so this is the front of the car. Jesus, oh my God, this is just looks so mad. Here at least now I'm starting to make some sort of uh, radiuses for the back of the bonnet, even though I didn't know what the bonnet was gonna look like. And also the engine here just looks like that straight six beamer lump then, which was never gonna be, you know, sort of suitable. And also on this car, because it's a production car, I wasn't about to detail the whole engine bay. Um, it all did get painted, but not heavily detailed. And also the underside of this car, other than the wheel arches, the actual floor pan was just a car underneath. You know, it's just painted black, all very nice and tidy, but um, definitely not a car to sit on mirrors at a show. In this picture, this is, I, I, think, I think this is a man that you, you'd ask, are you okay? I seriously do, because what is going on here? What was I thinking? Is this a polystyrene supercharger with velocity stacks? Yeah, all of those things are really happening in this picture. Good God. I was obviously doing something that day. Quite what, I don't know. Oh, look at this. This is just so nice. So still all just in polystyrene, sanded to this lovely shape, and at this point, we're starting to look at the opening aperture to get to the battery and the pump and stuff like that. Um, and also we've got this um, aperture at the bottom, which becomes like the rear 60s style drop down grill. Can't quite believe how clean that workshop is. Oh, and hilariously up here, someone's tried to make their own supercharger out of Fomex. <laughs> and now that went. Oh, and here's more. So then, this was a this was a sculpted front for for Cosmotron that never made the cut. Um, I thought this would look awesome with these lights, with the lights down here or something. This sort of beak, which is just the most off-center thing I've ever seen. So after a day of graft of making this, Kirsty came into the workshop and said to me that um, it looked rubbish. 
Uh, you can see a lot's going on here. Shortly after this, I hacked the whole front off and redid it, but that is the absolute beauty with um, polystyrene, because what's this cost me? Nothing, bit of plaster there, it's not cost me anything. Other things you can see on this, yes, I really did have a go at making a supercharger out of Fomex, but we can see the cover for the top of the radiator, and also we can see the start of the uh, rocker cover that covers up the origins of the BMW engine and makes it look a little bit more retro and a little bit less like a modern car. Okay then, so, bit more going on now. This isn't my Fomex supercharger. This is a real supercharger. And at this point, I was experimenting with not having the whole thing covered. I was gonna cover these bits in, maybe have a bit there, but not have a full bonnet on it. I'm still experimenting here with getting this sort of frown in the front of the car so it looks a bit meaner. And on this side, I did have this crazy notion that the, I think, is it the X-Type Jag that's got the two little oval lights? I was gonna fit Jag lights in it because they seem good. And I, I made this whole side with this sort of cleft up it for the lights to fit in, but that never came to be. I just didn't like it, didn't look right. But again, it's only plaster, it's only polystyrene. Who cares? Chop it off, throw it in the bin. Now, actually remember the day this was taken. The car goes from being like just a load of dreams and drawing to you stand there and if you blur your eyes, well, we'll close one and then really blur the other, you could almost imagine how it was gonna be. So we had a lot more work done to the ring here. We've got the scoop in, we've got rid of the bit where the holes are. We've started to drop this side skirt down that swoops front to back, forming the front arch, even here, a bit of actual fiberglass which why I was doing fiberglassing when I'd not finished everything else off, I don't know, but uh, the impetulance of youth, eh? Um, anyway, looking good. And also, I'd managed to bolt those wheels on. I had to have, um, I had to have like a, a special wheel adapter made between Jag, Chevy and BMW, and it's literally like three mil out, you know. A, a lesser man would have just waggled the drill round in the wheels and whacked them on, but um, no, they are on you know, proper spaces, everything's done right out there. And mark one of the rear lights, but we'll come to that in a minute. And again from the rear, um, since last time I got a lot of radiuses a lot nicer, really smooth this in. You can see this piece that fits over the metal ring that fits in there, that's come along. And even a little bit of work on the start of the dashboard on this but definitely uh, moving forward. And there in the background, there's them original lights. <gasps> and there they are, the lights are on. It took me a while to make these. Uh, these are fiberglass here, so I'd made them in plaster and then molded four off. And then I put them on and I thought they look like eyes or boobs. Uh, and after sleeping on it, I thought, you know what? They have got to go in the bin. And I don't even know, they didn't turn up on another car or anything, but there was a lot of work in making those four lights. But you know if it ain't right, it's just gotta go. So now, we come to a point here where things are really going well. This is all glass now. The, the petrol flap just there as well was the, the original Z3 petrol cap. And it just so happened that I arched this line a little bit and managed to retain that. So. When you open that, it's just the BMW metalwork inside. There really are very few sort of shoddy edges on this car. And I think here I'm taking this picture, because a lot of the time in a photo you can see what you can't see in real life. And you can see this is, it arches through these lines. And I think in the end what I did was put a piece of Fomex under there and then backfill down to get like a, a fluid line between these two points. At the time, I think I, I think I had a trolley jack. I don't know, but I remember laying on the floor having a lot of filler dust in my eyes to make that happen. But the rest of it is looking quite good. Again, you know one of them things where you go around your mate's house and you'd say, are you all right, mate? You know, do you need some help? Because yes, we're back to the Fomex supercharger, but the rocker cover that ended up being the actual rocker cover on the car is there. 
and uh, it's starting to look pretty good. And now, <laughs> thankfully, real supercharger. And if you think, I know that supercharger, yeah, that's the supercharger off of Automatron. This car never looked right with the supercharger. It was so incredibly heavy. I couldn't find anywhere to mount it to the engine safely. And so it, um, it didn't end up on there. I do like how I've sprayed these bits of plastic tube with silver paint to make them look more like they're real. More attention needed. At the time as well, and I own the God's Own Sander, the, uh, the Route 420 long block now, which would have made a lot of this simpler, but at the time I had an orbital sander, a block of wood, and some sandpaper. And most of this I sanded by hand. One of my favorite pictures of all time of the car. This wheel looked great in this arch. This front looks great. Everything here is full on happy days. I remember um, because this was raised up, there were stairs sort of leading down into the garden or steps. And I remember taking that picture thinking, yes, 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 this is going to be good. It's going to be good. Don't worry. And I'd never made a car like this before at the time. But um, yeah, I knew it was going to be good. Now then, so again, experimenting with how the engine was going to be. Still with the supercharger here. But now I've got six carburettors off of mini metros that I was messing about with and trying to get this to look pretty cool. But sadly, it was never to be. Right then, so things are getting serious now. We've got a bit of primer on. We've got, there's all the lovely curves around here. And um, this has been beefed up from that sort of piece of polystyrene that it was before. Now it's all been glass. Two stainless steel back boxes here that sound, well, sounded, still sound today. Absolutely lovely. This car is just such a nice car. You can also things, see things I, I've done. I've painted the brake calipers here. And it's also got this removable inner arch. And both sides have got this. And it was, it's painted body colour. And it's fully removable. Um, you take the wheel off, you can take this whole inner arch out and you can get to everything that, you know, for any sort of maintenance. We've also got here the rear lights. Now, I moulded these two teardrops and then I made, these were removable, these two um, sort of chrome trims on. Um, I made them out of fiberglass, doing my fiberglass over tape technique, and I sprayed them in the um, chrome paint, which was brand new at the time, which only over looks like polished aluminium. Then I used some reeded aluminium in there at the end, and these are Model A backlights turned round, and they were they were actually glass. They they are the real deal, and I bought I bought them off a bloke in America and had them shipped over, but. I was more pleased with this, although I'm well aware it still looks like a face. Oh yes, glory days, glory days. We have now headlights in. The front is how it would have been. Nice straight bodywork, lots of high build primer. Even the interior has been uh, done in this picture. Still labouring under the thing that this thing was going to have the supercharger on it. And it's got this inlet manifold that got all the way to being painted, still hangs on the garage wall, has never been on a car. And this central heating expansion tank, which I found in the bargain bin of a plumbing supplies place. And I thought, that'll make a moon tank. And a bit of the old chrome paint and stick it in there. And uh, it just finished that front off really well. And if you want to know more about the, the way to do this sort of semi-chrome effect on the meat wagon, I'm going to be doing loads of it. So join us in 2022 to show how to make a load of Bondo look like polished aluminium. So the dome ring is up. Um, and why wouldn't you have the dome ring up? This wall worked hydraulically by this point and it was all on remote control and it was just great. And this is one of the first times, if my memory serves me well, that I worked with Hot Rod Legend Lee Cox and he did, he wired the lights and he wired the remote for that. Up to this point though, all of this I've done just on my own. Well, what a day. I have the dome. I visited the place about 10 times to discuss how we we're going to make the dome, all the ways we were going to do it. When I finally went to have it done, the bloke at the dome place said, we were just humouring you. 
We thought you're a joker. Um, why would you ever have a glass dome for the roof on a car? And I said, no, 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 I'm really doing it. And they just couldn't believe that I was for real. Also in this picture, you can see this piece now is a removable panel. So all the rear lights and everything come out so you can access stuff. Those chrome trims aren't chromed on there yet, but they soon will be. Um, and you can get a really good glimpse of this interior. And you know what? As I say that, that's where those lights went. They ended up being these two bullets in the interior. So one side of the original lights did end up in there. And don't forget, the day I lifted this onto this was the first time in the UK, dare I say Europe, this had ever happened. Never been a bubble dome car in this country up until this point. And here is, here's the interior. So I tried to hide as much of the Z3 as I could. I made this swept interior that swept round and into the doors. Um, I just made this in like plastic card, fiberglass over it, because of course this has to always be hollow. I made this um, centre console with this removable fake radio that was held in on magnets. Also this hole here was for the cigarette lighter so I could still use a sat nav. I've got all the dials in there. So those dials in there screw into the dashboard and only show you the dials, the BMW dials behind. This sort of trans tunnel here covered the handbrake and everything. So I, had to, I just used to pop this off to pull the handbrake up. I'd normally just stick it in gear when I parked it. And down here, all down into the footwells is molded. And you can just make out a circle there where a lever went that operated a cable release to undo the latch that held the dome down. Because if you imagine the ram just pushes the dome, there was no mechanical linkage. So it would push it up, gravity would bring it down. But if you were stuck in the car, if you pushed on this, it would push the dome off the end of the ram and the roof would open. You couldn't get stuck in this car. Although it always amused me that I'd pull up at a show one day and just sit in the car for the whole weekend. That might have happened. I'm sorry, eh? Very early days of the steering wheel I made um, because another thing that obsesses me is always making the steering wheels for cars. Good God, I'm alone. Now we start to get into it. <laughs> so, steering wheels finished. Dashboard's looking a lot better. Awesome! And this is all fiberglass, fiberglass shifter. If this was really aluminium, it wouldn't work. People say, wow, that looks amazing. Yeah, because it just shouldn't be. This, this shouldn't exist in this world. It weighs nothing, but it bolts onto the gear shift and that's it. It's super cool, highly impractical, um, hot rod style shifter. This is a fake inlet manifold. I thought for a second it was the one that's still on the garage wall, but it's not. It is the one that ended up on the car. It's got its cool bullet feature at the front. Of course, it is a fake inlet manifold. I wanted the, the engine to lock um, old fashioned and I do see sometimes people will run will get a modern engine and then run it on carbs and I always think no just make it look like it runs on cars, carbs keep all the fuel injection if you want to run like a three carb setup on the top do that but don't put speed parts on a car to make a car go slower um, that's just madness so yeah all of this uh, ends up being fake, but this is um, all welded together, all in steel, and then finished in the chrome effect paint. You can see the dashboard in this corner of the picture is painted there in this pearlescent white, and that awesome gear shift sitting there. It's the rocker cover. So it's the first engine component I ever made and out uh, of fiberglass and then painted. It was the first time I did this reading, which I'm doing some of. Um, on the meat wagon. This is the first time I used a like a stone fleck paint between the reeds so it looks like it's been cast. But I'll be showing you all that technique in a future episode. This is the almost completed um, engine cover on Cosmotron. So we see six Polish Mini Metro carbs there. Love an SU. SU just such a cool looking carb. Ed Roth also loved SUs. Um, he had um, twin SUs on his Harley and he loved them. And how do I know this? Because Dennis Roth told me out of his face to mine. So we've got this little scoop here to let air in for the aircon. 
This little hatch here is for the latch to open the roof. All these are real aluminium. Now, this as well, a big point about this engine. It looks great. I was making major mistakes here. So none of this does anything, but I made it out of aluminium. It took hours and I had to keep cleaning it. These carburetors, I polished them. I didn't paint them in the polished aluminium paint as seen here. I polished those. Looks the same. This is brilliant, never goes dull. This goes dull like twice a week. So I had to keep polishing all of that. These bullets were from John Lewis and they were salt and pepper pops for about one year. John Lewis sold the perfect hot rod bullet for about four quid. If you're gonna have polished aluminium, do it in paint. Don't do it in aluminium because it only polishes up for a day. Then it goes dull and you have to keep polishing it. And no one wants to clean a car. Almost a day of myth and legend. This car actually won a competition in a magazine to get like a £30,000 paint job. Um, it went to this absolute muppet in Wales who really made a mess of it and then it was going to be in a red candy and then it came back to me and it was it was abysmal so then I had to strip it down and repaint it. So thank you to that man in Wales who ruined my car. Don't say you can paint a car when you can't. He got paint as well all over the dome, you know. It was really, really bad. It was a terrible time. Um, but this, this paintwork, not done by me on this occasion. This was done by godlike genius, Melvin Jarvis. He came round and laid this paint down. And I remember this, I remember this picture in particular. I went in there after he painted it and this finish blew my mind. And then he spent three days machine polishing it until it literally looked like it was blown from glass. And yes, everything under the arches is painted, all inside the dome, everything is painted dead right. Malv, I thank you then, I thank you to this day. Just what a job. It's very first show. So, Cosmotron at its very first show at the NEC, at the Classic Car Show. NEC Classic Car Show that had, you know, like when these silly year cutoff points, like, you know, like 1956 cutoff. Well, I got in in my 1999 Z3, okay, and no one noticed. <laughs> Same Z3 that I also had at Hot Rod Hayride, which is, it's like, it's like pre-1901 or something, isn't it? There it is with the dome on. Like I say, everything's painted in this. Uh, it's a Hyundai lilac colour it was. And we put this bit of like mirror prism flake through it. So it really comes alive in the right light. This is a photo shoot for custom car. <laughs> and it was a white studio sort of custom shoot when car magazines used to have money to like hire out a studio for the day. That don't happen anymore. And I was really proud. This is like so off of who, but it's got a tax disc. Um, and I was really proud of it having a tax disc because it was taxing MOT and everyone said, oh, you can't drive that on the road. And of course, I could drive it on the road. It was taxed, MOT and insured. And in this picture, I don't know if you'll see it, but there is the lovely flake in there. Um, we've got this um, draw pull rear grill. I had the place called MK Fabrications in Leicester cut me this piece of mesh out with a big stamping machine they had. And I went in and said, I want the mesh to look like the mesh on the top of a 1960s electric wall heater. Um, because Andy Saunders had used the mesh off a 60s, 70s um, wall heater on one of his cars. And I wanted that same mesh. So they managed to stamp me out this piece of mesh and then I put these moisturiser lids, I stuck them on there. You can see the indicators just here, sort of snuggled in there. And yeah, everything's there, even side repeaters. The finished engine cover. So, just so much work. I just, even now, I look at this and I think, well, that looks all right. And then I remember how much work. You now it's got this little matte black cover that covers some other stuff you don't need to see. I made all of this, all of this, all of this. I made this. Okay, so I bought the carbs. I should have painted them, but I polished them. 
It's the interior. The interior all done in like a diamond pleat. I drew up all the patterns and then curse stitched all of this to get this teardrop shaped door panel and to get the triangles going up and down. Took a few goes and we nearly ran out of this pearlescent vinyl and we'd, uh, I'd imported it from Texas. <laughs> so I really didn't want to run out of it. Um, but we did manage to get it done. See, there's some more salt and pepper pots here to make these bullets, salt and pepper pots to make the T-top on this um, gear shifter. The fake radio there. Now the fake radio's got these little turned aluminium buttons and these knobs. I bought a full, like, 1970s separate radio amp at a car boot sale. And I cut that whole thing up and made it small enough to fit in there. And that came in and out, so you could access the radio. The bullet in the middle of the steering wheel uh, literally landed at my feet on bonfire night <laughs> off of the top of a rocket. It really did. This car, it did then, and I'm sure it does to this day. I've not seen it myself real for a few years. But it really is like a manufactured car, not like a hot rod or a kit car. It feels like it's come out of a factory. Because of BMW underpinnings, it really drives so nice. To end the Cosmotron Odyssey, who better than weird future guy Will I Am? Will I Am, who requested Cosmotron for this photo shoot with a newspaper I'm not going to mention. It was in the newspaper, and Will I Am was there, and my car, and he'd asked to have that car. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so that's it for this week. Looking back over that, oh my God, I really didn't know what I was doing with Cosmotron, but I've done it a few times now. So, in the new year, we're gonna have loads more builds. Coming up next week, we're gonna have updates on the Meat Wagon, SS Mercedes, and the Sahara truck. We're gonna be looking at all of that stuff. So, from me and everyone at Custom Works, a very happy new year. Uh, thank you very much, and good night.